So I just want to give you a little bit of a, a history lesson on, on like where the Vedas came from and how it is um, relevant and related to this particular meditation practice. So the Vedas are an ancient body of knowledge, which is a human interpretation of natural law. So it's not a doctrine. It's not a dogma. It's not a set of rules. It's not telling you how you should or shouldn't do anything. The Vedas are an ancient body of knowledge that is a human attempt to understand the laws of nature so that we can use those laws to help us get to where we want to go instead of fighting against them and being bashed against the rocks. So as I was saying, the Vedas are not a religion. It's not a doctrine. It's not a dogma. It's an ancient body of knowledge. It's about 6,000 years old. It is the same body of knowledge that gives us yoga, acupuncture, feng shui, Ayurvedic medicine, like most of these ancient systems of healing where we're using nature to help us get to where we want to go, many of these are born out of the Vedas. Um, now, a lot of people will see like these Vedic gods and goddesses, um, or they'll see like modern day Hinduism, and they'll get sort of confused because Hinduism is a religion. Um, and, but Hinduism, as it exists right now, is almost like a hybrid of the Vedas and the various dogmatic and doctrine religions that were uh, infused into India over the last few hundred years. Um, so one of the reasons why the Vedas are so special is that for India, for many thousands of years, it was protected. Right? There was the Himalayas on the north, and there was two oceans on the bottom. So it was very well protected for many thousands of years, which is why this knowledge was passed down for so many generations in its purity without being cross um, influenced by other philosophies and other religions. Um, I am not an expert on this, but the little that I do know about other ancient philosophies, like the Mayans and the Incans and the Hawaiian shamanism and the indigenous cultures of Africa and New Zealand, the Native Americans, like when you get to the root of the root of the root, they're really very much saying all the same thing. Um, so I don't think that the Vedas are necessarily special. I just think that they were preserved very well for longer than most of the other philosophies have been preserved. Um, because we either massacred the entire civilization or they got, um, I don't want to say contaminated, but like cross-pollinated. Um, but Hinduism, I would sort of say, is a cross-pollination of, of the Vedas and then you know, various influences of Islam and Christianity, because England you know, invaded India for a few hundred years. Um, so a lot of people will get scared when they hear about like, names of Vedic gods and goddesses. Um, and they'll say, well, like, oh, like Shiva is the god of destruction, or like Lakshmi is the goddess of abundance. And as it, is, it exists right now, it very much seems like people are, are worshiping these external gods, multi-gods, you know, polytheistic religion. And there's many deities, there's many idols everywhere. Um, but if we go back to the root of the root of the root, and we go back to the Vedas, it's not about worshiping multiple gods, okay? Because the fundamental truth is that there's only one thing and we're all it. So I'm not worshiping Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. Instead, Lakshmi is expressive of the piece of me that is in charge of abundance. I'm not fearful of or worshiping Shiva, the god of destruction. Instead, Shiva is representative of the piece of me that destroys irrelevancy. But basically, I just wanted to give you like a big overview that the Vedas are not a religion. Um, it is a philosophy. It is an understanding of natural law and that all these gods and goddesses are really designed to be expressive of different pieces of you.